Hi, Santiago from Upsev here. This is the first video in a series of tutorials for the Ultimate Inventory System, or UIS for short. This series will hopefully show you all that the asset has to offer. We'll start with the basics and steadily get into how to achieve more advanced use cases. In this video, we will focus on the basic concepts which are essential to understand how to use the system efficiently. So, what is an inventory? An inventory is a collection of items. Many games have an inventory, yet the way they function vastly differ from one game to the other. For example, an RPG or a survival game could have an inventory UI with hundreds of complex items, while an FPS or an action game could have a very limited amount of items that can be carried at any one time. The amount of information that is carried by an item can also differ from one game to the other. Some people may want very complex items with a lot of attributes that can change at runtime. Others may be interested in making a lot of simple items with just an icon and a description. Some items could be equipped or consumed like weapons and potions, while others could be simply used as crafting materials. The goal of Ultimate Inventory System is to allow developers to create any kind of inventory and item they want. To allow such flexibility, we created a modular system that allows you to add or remove any attribute and or feature from the system. With flexibility comes complexity. That's why we laid down some rules. Following those rules and understanding why those rules exist is key to getting the most out of the system. The ultimate inventory system can be a bit overwhelming at first because there are a lot of concepts and terminology to learn. But once you do, things will start to make a lot of sense. Let's start by explaining the relationship between items, item definitions, and item categories. When we wish to add an item to our game, we start by creating its definition. The item definition is the object that will be used to create our items at runtime. You may think of it as a mold. The iron sword does not have any attributes yet. Attributes are the item's properties. For example, the attack or the item icon. Attributes can be any sort of data. It is not limited to sprites or integers. Attributes are defined by the item category. The item categories can be nested and have multiple parents. The iron sword could be part of the sword category, and the sword category could be part of the weapon category, and the weapon category could be part of many other categories, such as usable, pickupable, shoppable, equipable, and more. The attributes defined by those categories will be inherited by all children categories and item definitions. In this example, we have defined three attributes, category icon, icon, and attack. When an attribute is inherited by an item category or an item definition, it can be overwritten. For example, the sword category icon is overwritten on the sword and the icon attribute is overwritten on the iron sword definition. Of course, we can even overwrite the attributes directly on the items created using the item definition, allowing us to create many iron swords with different attack values if we wish to. As you can see, the category icon attribute is only relevant to the categories, and the icon attribute will not change for each iron sword item. In this example, the category icon attribute is part of the item category attribute collection, and the icon attribute is part of the item definition attribute collection, and the attack attribute is part of the item attribute collection. It is important to organize your attributes in this way to minimize errors. For example, we wouldn't want the item to overwrite the category icon. If we had wished for all iron swords to have the same attack value, we would have defined the attack attribute 
within the item definition attribute collection instead of the item attribute collection. Item categories and item definitions are stored in an object we call the inventory database. It also stores other objects, such as the currencies and the crafting recipes. For now, we will focus only on the item categories and item definitions. The database is used to hold a reference to all objects in the system, such that they can be loaded and initialized correctly when starting the game. Your game should only be using a single database. Now that we showed an overview of the system, let's take a look at it within the Unity editor. First, I would like to point out that I am using Unity version 2019.4 and UIS version 1.0. Press play to have a look at the demo scene. Press the button to continue and open the inventory using the menu button. As you can see, we can view our items, which are organized by item categories. We can also perform certain actions, such as consume, assign, open, or equip, and unequip, depending on the type of items. These are item actions. We also use item boxes to display differently in the UI, depending on the type of the item. We can use attributes to show different values for our items, whether they are consumables or equipment or anything really. Let's see in the editor how this is set up. First, I would like to point out that under the game game object, we have a inventory system manager. This component is required for the system to work. Here, we specify our database. You should create your own database for your own project. It is highly recommended to have a single database for your entire project. Under our player character, we can see that our components, such as the inventory, currency owner, character equipper, and more, have a reference to our database. All these are pointing to the same component here. The first thing you should do with a new project is create your database. You can go under Tools, Opsiv, Ultimate Inventory System, Main Manager. Under the Setup tab, you can find your database. You can choose to create a new one by pressing this button. Or to get a head start, you can press this button to duplicate. This is a process that can take quite some time. Once it is done, we need to apply this database in our project. As you can see, we can either change it here or a better option is to change it for our entire project. For example, we can go under Opsiv, Ultimate Inventory System, Demo, right click, and go under the Ultimate Inventory System, Replace Database Object. This will use the new database we just created and is currently referenced in the in database field in our main manager to replace all the references to the objects from the old database to the new one. This process can take a while. The process has now finished. To make sure it worked, we can go under the game game object and we can see that our inventory system manager is now using the new database. We can make sure that is the case by going to the player character and as you can see, our inventory component, our currency owner, and our character equipper is indeed using the new database. We're not getting any warnings, and therefore everything is good.
We can open the database to edit it by pressing this button here or by going to Tools, AppSiv, Ultimate Inventory System, Main Manager. We need to make sure that we are indeed referencing the right database. And we can now select these tabs to modify the objects we want. For now, we will only focus on the item categories and item definitions. Item categories are used to organize your items, and item definitions is what will define your items, as the name suggests. We will have a look at the weapons item category, and we can see that our weapons is set as abstract. That means that we cannot have an item that is directly under our weapon category. If we go under our descendants, we can see that weapons has two descendants, either wand or sword. Let's click on sword. Now you can see that our sword item category is not abstract, therefore it can have direct item definitions. And therefore we can set whether they are mutable or unique. Mutable items are items that can change at runtime. Unique items are items that cannot stack. They are usually given a specific ID. We can change how the box here looks by changing the color and by setting an icon if we want. We can set parents to the item category. In this case, we have a parent of weapons. And then finally, the most important part is setting your attributes for your items. As you can see, we have category attributes, which are specific to the item category. For example, a category icon or an animation ID. This means that any item which is under our weapons category will have an animation ID of 1. We have our item definitions attributes, which are specific to the item definition, which means that any item which has the same item definition will all have these attributes. We have attributes for the icon, the description, some prefabs, some base attacks, some buy and sell prices, and more prefabs. Finally, we have our item attributes, which are attributes which are specific to an item, which means you could have two swords or two iron swords, which could have different values for attack, for example. If we go under our direct item definitions, we can see our item definitions here. We can press on our iron sword. By doing so, we get directly redirected to our item definitions tab and our iron sword gets selected. Here we can see that our item definitions attributes are here and we can set their values. As you can see, we can set whether we inherit the value from the item category. We can also override it or modify it. In this case, we are overriding our icon. We can also do the same for a description and any other attributes. In the case of descriptions, we can clearly see that we are inheriting this value and we are overriding it by our new value. Under our item attributes, we can do the same. The item attributes is the default item attribute that an item will be spawned with when it is created. This means that it is specific to an item. We can see here all the attributes which are inherited from these categories. We can see also our ancestors and descendants and our recipes if we wanted to. Let's have a look at our potion to see a different type of item. And as you can see, we do not have any attributes under our item attributes. We only have item definition attributes. That's because the potion does not change at runtime. So we didn't want two different potions to have different values. 
We can go to the potion item category by pressing the consumable item category and you'll see that it is neither mutable nor unique that means that our potions can be stacked and they will all have the same ID I would like also to point out that you can easily change the type of an attribute by selecting it in this drop down you can also move attributes from an attribute collection to another by pressing this cog icon, going to move to, and selecting where it should go. Now that we've looked at the attributes, the item categories and item definitions, let's try to create our own item definition. Let's go under item definitions, and let's try to create a cookie item. As you can see, when we create an item definition, it gets automatically added to the uncategorized item category. This is a special item category that cannot be removed. We can change it here by selecting our consumable item category. We could set a parent so it's such that the attributes are inherited by the parent item definition instead of the item category. In our case, we'll just create our cookie. We can set a editor icon to customize it in the editor. We'll also set its actual icon for its in-game icon. We can set a description. We can change its pickup prefab, its heal amount, its buy price and its sell price. Now that we created our cookie item, we can add it to our character to see it in action. Let's close the editor, go to the player character, and find our inventory component. Under the main item collection, we will press the plus button to add an item, add a count of 5 and change the item to a cookie. Here we can see some details about our item. We can see our item definition attributes, our item category attributes and our item attributes. If we were to select our wooden sword, you will see that we can even set our item attributes directly in the inspector. Let's press play. Press continue, open the inventory, and let's find our cookies. There you go. As you can see, we can consume, and we are consuming and restoring the health amount that we specified as the attribute value. The name and the descriptions are just like we set. In this video, we learned about the item categories, item definitions, and how they are organized in the database. If you have any questions, please join our Discord and our forums. You can find the links in the description below. See you in the next video.